Hey, Eric here. I am in my 1976 PA32 Hyperlance and wanted to do a video review on the UAvionics AV30C. The somewhat brief backstory was about a year and a half ago when I was doing my engine overhaul, my a and um, told me to yank out the vacuum system while I had the power plant off, and that kind of spiraled into more of a panel cleanup. And what, what we wanted to do, and what we were working on was, okay, what can we actually remove? And I currently have an Aspen Pro Max 1000 as my primary. And about a year and a half ago, they got approval for a panel to have just one, but you had to still have some redundant stuff. Um, but you could remove your vacuum system, which was important for me. I wanted to get rid of the gauges and the hoses and all of that other stuff out of the airplane. You still need to have backup airspeed altimeter, but in regard to other instruments, you need to have either an attitude or a slip skid. Well, my slip skid, the bearings were going out, and it was going to need to be overhauled, and I wanted to get rid of my attitude indicator. Um, that did bring in a whole other level of complexity because my attitude indicator was driving my legacy autopilot, so I had to get an EA100 from Aspen, which was then kind of a whole nother, whole nother story. But in this situation, what I found was the best solution for me was a UAvionics uh, AV30C. I did look at the Garmin products. I was evaluating them, seeing if that made sense. The problem was the numbers were just quite a bit bigger, and especially on the install side. The UAvionics installs so quick and so easy. Um, it's just it, it's just a dream for that regard. They did a great job. My a &P went through the setup on it. He was commenting on just how easy the setup was in regard to the UI. So the question is then, what do I think? I've had it now for about a year. And what do I like? What do I not like, etc. Neither of us knew that software updates would be so prevalent on it. Just since we've had it here in operation for about a year, there's been two software releases. And those software releases are done via a DB9 serial connector that you interface into the back. So what I'm saying there is that when you put together that connector, when your AMP puts together the connector that goes into the back, there's a procedure from UAvionics where you basically create a little pig tail that has a DB9. And then ten that that's under your panel, you can plug into that DB9 on the laptop and run an update very quickly. Unfortunately, we missed that memo. So now when he does an update, he actually has to come to the back of the panel, pull the existing connector off, put a separate little connector on there, and it then converts to a DB9 and come then do the update. It's a pain. So make sure that if you're doing one, have him put those extra couple pins in there, down to a DB9 to make the updates easy. It had some errors in its density altitude calculations. The density altitude wasn't working. I called UAvionics, they said, oh yeah, that's, that was a software glitch. Uh, run this new software, it will be fixed. That took care of that. Uh, overall, there's some really, really neat features, especially at the price point. I want to say they're kind of right now, $2,500. Getting angle of attack, getting density altitude, getting backup altimeter, backup outdoor temp temperature, that type of functionality was really powerful. There's also a bunch of other features in there, but just those alone make it a no-brainer for me. I love having another attitude indicator that is not vacuum-driven, that's completely solid state. For me, from a safety standpoint, I, I greatly appreciate that. To go back on the AOA, it is really neat that it has a scale, it actually shows you when you're approaching the limit. It also then gives you an alert on the display, which you can also tie into your audio panel and have it enunciated if you want. Super bright, good looking display. It does have a photo cell on it, so it adjusts automatically. Yeah, I really can't say enough about it. It's very, very feature rich. I'll do another little video here, okay? Show you the functionality into the display itself. Barrow setting is just simply done by pressing the center knob, um, ends up shifting the slip skid, moves out of the way, gives you the ability to set it, click it again to make it go away. When it comes to all these other fields around here, 
these are completely customizable. So if I go ahead and click the menu button, see I get this edit fields, and then I turn the knob and I can go through all these different fields and change them to be anything I want. So for example, if I come up here right now, this is set to density altitude. I can go ahead and click the knob. Now you can see I can talk through density altitude, GPS, um, you know, various other settings here through each one of these different spots. And now let's go into the other part of the setup separate from the fields. So if I click menu, there's my fields option. So I'll go ahead and hit next. And now I have rotate to select for setup. So let's go into, for example, the UI. So I can click the knob. Now I can toggle between three different styles based on what I like. So this one is a nice gray and black. This one I'm not a big fan of, partly just because I find it to be really bright. It's just a little bit too intense for me and it can be distracting. So I tend to like this uh, kind of steel blue over brown. I think it's just a really nice look. It's not too bright, um, gives you some nice contrast. Okay, I can go ahead and toggle through. We can also go into the font and we can go through different fonts, right? I personally am more of an aerial guy. Um, your audio volume, angle of attack alerts, that's actually where it pops up on here and you get a message on the display. You know, how much do you're actually pulling? Are you, ex are you in excessive roll, which is really neat. I've played around with that a bit. I've actually generated that alert and it's really nice. It just pops up, goes roll, roll right on the display. That's really about all the features of the device. I think it's very, very feature rich, especially for the $2,200-ish price point. Um, I would strongly recommend it. I like that it fits into a standard round form. It's it's just a really feature rich product. And you know, UAVionics, if you guys are if you guys are watching this, please work hard to get certified for altitude and airspeed. It would just it would insanely increase the value of this product. And even if you had some you know, unlock key we had to pay for to do it, it would be very, very welcome. So that's my review on the AB30C.